In this video, I'll discuss how to take the derivative of a polar curve. Here we have the curve r equals 2 cosine 4 theta, and we're asked to find the slope of that. So here's a, a little graph of, of that curve. And note that, remember with polar curves, here at this point, uh, theta is 0, and our radius is 2, and we're going to be going this way. Because remember, with a polar curve, it's like you have this imaginary line that is sweeping through. It's, it's sweeping through at, at some angle theta. And so what's going to happen is, as our theta grows, our, uh, our radius changes. So here, when our theta is 0, right along this line. Our radius is 2, so we're out at this point, and then we're going in this direction. We're, we're actually tracing. It's going to go just like this. I'll just start sketching this. And then comes up here and here. Guess what our guess what our um, theta is? Our theta is pi over 2. Right? We're up at if the orange imaginary orange line is our theta, we're at pi over two. So again, when pi over when theta is pi over two, our radius is two again. Now, okay, so that's just a review on the polar curves. Now let's talk about the slope of the curve. So we want to talk about the slope of the curve at any of these points. So here, uh, when theta is zero, our slope, if the green line is a slope, a slope is, is undefined actually right here. And somewhere around here, our slope is zero. And uh, somewhere around, let's see, this is a little bit easier to draw. Somewhere around here, our slope is one. Okay, so so anyway, there we go. That That's what we're looking for is the slope at any given theta. And we're just going to uh, show it in terms of theta. I'm not going to uh, plug in. I could plug in theta for zero, and we're going to get an undefined slope. Okay. First of all, uh, we can't just take the derivative of r because, uh, well, we're going to do that, but that's not going to give us the slope of the curve. That would just be the rate of change of r, and we want the slope of the curve. Well, there's some neat math behind it, um, but let me just go ahead and give it to you. Today, I'm going to give you the hammer. I won't make you build the hammer. And I'll say that dy dx, the slope, and dy and dx equals r prime. And let me let me define real quickly that dr d theta. I'll call that r prime. Okay, I'll go. I'll come back and find what r prime is. So r prime times sine of theta plus just the r function here, just the r, times cosine of theta over r prime again, times cosine of theta minus just the r function of sine of theta. Okay, and then we're just going to plug this stuff right in. So um, dr d theta is what I'm defining for r prime. And just real quickly, then r prime would equal, taking the derivative of this, we've got the 2 times the derivative of cosine of 4 theta. That's the negative sine of 4 theta multiplied by the derivative of what's inside here. So multiplied by 4. That's the chain rule. So ultimately, then I have r prime equals negative 8 because of the negative sign here, times the sine of 4 theta. Don't even think about taking that 4 theta and, and multiplying this 4 over by the negative 8. That's, that 4 theta is inside the sine function. Let's lock it in there with parentheses. Okay, now I'm going to just take this right here, what I've got underlined in purple, and plug it in every time I see r prime. And the rest of the stuff, I'm just plugging in. I'm plugging in just r for r, or that is the 2 cosine 4 theta every time I see r. All right, so real quickly, that is dy dx. The slope of the curve is negative 8 
sine of 4 theta, that's r prime, times sine of theta, that's this part, plus the r function, that's 2 cosine 4 theta, times sine, uh, cosine of theta, and no, we cannot multiply cosine of 4 theta times cosine of theta because there's a different um, function in there. It's the cosine of 4 theta and cosine of just theta. You can't multiply those. Now, in the denominator, r prime, again, we've got the negative 8 sine of 4 theta. If you're comfortable not doing these parentheses, certainly, that's okay. We could just put parentheses around the sine of theta. But anyway, we've got uh, times the cosine of theta. I'm doing this part now. Cosine of theta minus, I am here now, minus r, and that's the 2 cosine 4 theta. 2, uh, let's, let's stick with the same color here. Minus 2 cosine 4 theta times, here I am now here, times sine of theta. And we could um, simplify this 2 that I multiplied. I'm going to factor it back out again. And in some answer books, they'll factor out a negative 2 just to keep it away from negative in the front there. Um, I'm, I'm not going to factor out a negative 2. I'm just going to factor out a 2. But uh, the answer is going to be the, the same. I mean, you'll get the same result if you plug in the same theta. So factoring out and canceling a 2 out of out of everything here. Out of every of these, every one of these, you've got negative 4 sine of 4 theta times the sine of theta plus, I've canceled that 2 out, so plus just cosine of 4 theta times cosine of theta all over negative 4 times sine of 4 theta times the cosine of theta minus cosine of 4 theta times the sine of theta. That's it. That's the slope at any given theta. And you're thinking, great, that doesn't doesn't look so nice. Well, sure it doesn't. But let's just plug in um, 0. Let's say theta equals 0. Theta equals 0. Let's put that in right there. And what would happen there is anytime you would have sine of theta, it would be it would be 0. That's right here and right here. And you'd have 0 in the denominator then because 0 minus 0 is is zero and zero in the de denominator would make an undefined expression and that would give us our vertical or undefined slope right at that point what we predicted e initially